It's Monday, May 6, 2013. Thanks for tuning in to the 404 Show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Ty Pendlebury. I'm Scott Stein. I'm Ariel Nunez. Welcome to the program. Justin Yu is not here today, as you might have just heard, with uh, some unforeseen ailment that has rendered him completely useless on tennis this elbow. morning. <laughs> tennis elbow? That would require some sort of athletic ability. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I, I, I can't say that we're in any better shape than he is on a Monday morning. Because let's be honest, Mondays are just filled with nothing. Yeah. But to help fill that void, Ty Pendlebury. G'day. Scott Stein. Hey. Going to be here. Indeed. With Google Glass. With Google Glass. Mm-hmm. Scott's just wearing it now because like, that's a thing. Yeah, it's, that, a, it's the thing to do this now month. Is, now I just like to do it. Yeah. That's I understand I, that. That's how I live my life. Yeah. How I, how I go about my day. Okay. <laughs> we'll get into more of that. Real quick, I want to talk about <laughs> some uh, some it's house cleaning. Some, some, we'll call it spring cleaning. I want to I wanna sort of uh, take a little inventory here and talk to uh, the listeners about last week. You should definitely go back and listen to some of the shows that we had. The great Mark Marin was on the show. We had Caroline McCarthy. Remember Caroline McCarthy? Oh, yeah. She was here? She was here on Friday. You That's just awesome. missed her. I think you just missed her. Hi. Nobody ever says hi. No one no, ever no, says no, hi no, to no, Scott no anymore. Yeah. Maybe it's the glasses, bring... man. <laughs> He's scaring people away. <laughs> it's very possible. I know. I expect that people don't say hi. So the reason I wanted to bring up the guests that we had last week is because, um, you know, it took a really long time to get Mark Marin just because there's a lot, you know, we it was very DIY and we just sort of set it up. And now I want to talk and I want to I want to maybe get the, the, the power of crowds, the power of our listening crew our our legion if you will and i want to talk about like new guests to aspire to like okay we we had we had people like danny devito we had mark mary we had all these great people and now i want to i want to jump forward and i want to let people know like who we're actively pursuing we haven't done this before you know what i mean because it's always just like hey we've got him now how about that so my next guy the next guy we want to get i want to get chris hardwick That'd be great. That's the next one. So that's like the you know who that is? No, no idea. You don't know who that is? No, is he a hockey player? No, <laughs> Nerdist. <laughs> oh, that too. No, okay. Right. I was gonna say he's <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and a great hockey player. I was gonna one say. Of the, one of the I was gonna say he's a host of Singled Out, but you you're Australian, so it wouldn't have resonated with you. You know, uh, can I tell you my crazy Chris Hardwick story? You freaking absolutely can. And I believe this to be absolutely true. And yeah. I, there's like no one fact checking my memories. But, Wait, but you believe this to be true, but it no, happened. No, it happened. But this is so long ago, it's like a hallucination. Okay. I I like met him for like a lunch at a friend's house way before Nerdist. It was when I think it was during the singled out days. So you're going back to like the mid nineties. Like ninety nine, yeah. two thousand is when I first moved to LA. Okay. And my friend uh who was out there as a playwright, uh, my friend Patrick, he uh he was over at his dad's house and they knew each other from uh, I don't know, sorry, connected worlds of T V. Yeah. And I remember he was like, Oh yeah, and this is this is Chris and I met him, we were just like, I don't know, had like a casual lunch or something, we we're just hanging out. And um, they were talking about something, and you know, I was like, oh, this is a cool person. And then, like, you know, years later, long enough that it's like, you know, through the fog of years, right? he's doing all the nerdist stuff and everything else. And I'm like, that's it's amazing. That was the guy. Yeah. That was, that was him. His path is remarkable. Now, I say like fact checking because like I went back and asked my friend, Pedrick, I was like, so we. We had we were over at your house with that guy. That was the guy. I was like, is he gonna remember that? He's, he's like, he's like, oh. he might. He's like, yeah, man, yeah. And I was like, so, but it happened, right? This really happened, right? I think I believe this to be true. If you, he will not remember this. Well, I mean, no if one will remember this if, but me because I'm not important. No, I don't think that's not a, what it is. I mean, when you <laughs> when you have a, a career that pulls you in four million different directions, yeah, you do a lot of your things. Your memory you takes don't g- takes a toll. It has people. a toll on your memory. It takes a toll on your memory. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, people like uh, you know, like the, 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 that question always comes up with like bands. Like, you think they'll remember me when I when we locked eyes on stage? Right, and we I saw said, each other that time. You know, I don't know, but it's worth asking. That's my because w- we will figure yeah. this out. He will be here right. if you will it. There's a way. If right? I bring this up to him, he'll either be like, "Oh yeah," or he'll just be like, "Yeah." yeah. Try to end the conversation. <laughs> he'll just, just be like, <laughs> "Get this guy with Dude, the glasses off." This guy's a deal breaker. This Google Glass is freaking don't, me out. <laughs> Security. <laughs> all I'm getting from that anecdote is that you said, "Hey," he said, "Hey," and that was it. <laughs> that was pretty much it. That's all I can say. Do you it's remember like, when I said, "Hey" to you 13 years ago? I chased <laughs> I chased someone down the street once who, I, who, who Joanna knew from school. And I thought it would be nice to say hi, and it was the creepiest experience ever because they like, started, I cor- almost cornered them, and they were like, I was like, I just want to say hi because if 
And this was who? No, it, it was someone who <laughs> tried, it was mortified. It was like someone who went to college with me. Oh, okay. So and this wasn't went like to, a celebrity or anything. No, went to high school with, yeah. with my wife. And, um, and it, she, you know, I just wanted to say hi. And yeah. by the time I finally tracked her down, it looked like I was like chasing oh, someone geez. randomly. <laughs> and then I was like, I just want to say hi. And then she was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great, yeah. and, I, and I realized how horrifying this moment was, and I don't want to ever know anyone again. It's so like you try and push. That's those why out you're wearing the glasses, so you don't <laughs> have to meet anyone ever again. So I can hide <laughs> because it's the worst thing. You say like, "Oh, I remember. I have an anecdote yeah. about you," and you're that weird person. Right. Well, all right. Sorry. I'm glad we went down that rabbit hole. Anyway, yeah. but I want to. I want to. I want to say that starting today, we're actively pursuing that. And I'm curious because I like having this transparency because people are always like, "How do you? You know, how do you? How does the show work?" Well, this is how it works. There's no bells and whistles. It's painfully, you know, low budge. When so are you getting John Stewart? That's th- who I get. That pe- freaking, uh, you yeah. know, uh, Jimmy Fallon can't get John Stewart. Conan O'Brien can't get uh, John Stewart. That would be. Stephen Colbert lives in Montclair. Does he? Yes, he does. Plot thickens. That doesn't help much. Doesn't but help much. But I, I could no, I couldn't pull some strings. Nah. I know people who know people. Pull those who work strings, on the Colbert man. Report, but. Um, you uh, you should get some of the cool science fiction writers. Yeah, I sound very nerdy, but like, like who? Who would you want? Well, obviously, like a William Gibson would be unbelievable. He would be, but I feel like that guy is so off the grid. What about like Warren Ellis if he's yeah. ever in town? Yeah, or another kind of off the grid dude. Off though. grid. Um, you know who's really nuts but awesome is Rudy Rucker. Not familiar know with that. He's a, that? he's a math professor out of, I think he's in UC Santa Cruz. He's yeah. written awesome and weird, trippy sci-fi books. Has a very strange view of the world. Rook with a great uh, suggestion in, in the chat room. Neil deGrasse uh, Tyson. Is That'd that, be amazing. That'd be sick. That'd be incredible. If you is did. it deGrasse or deGrasse? <laughs> you know, I keep thinking deGrasse Junior High and it that, throws me that off. That Canadian is it, TV show. Yeah, I I don't know. Doesn't I matter. He's brilliant. Sp- but I, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. So anyway, and, and and that's the that's the other one that I want to start the the thing. I want to I want to get Kevin Smith too. Oh, that'd be great. What about some guys from that uh, comic book men? Right, that some of those show. guys on that show. Brian, what's his last name? I can't remember. He's amazing. Yeah, he would be cool. Well, we're gonna try. We're gonna we're gonna start the uh, we're gonna start the wheels turn and see what happens. Watch comic book men. See AMC, how long... Thursdays. I don't know <laughs> what day. And on. then Chris Hardwick show is on there too, so we could do that. Can you ever get Shigeru Miyamoto ever on the show? Well, he, I would need a translator. I know. With, uh, I would Trennan, need that Bill Trennan dude. That would be amazing. It would be, <laughs> it would be confusing. It would take a while. That would be worth watching every second. Yeah, that would be fun. Or David Lynch. If you can get David Lynch. <laughs> think about this. He's promoting transcendental meditation right yeah. now. Maybe if you come in on that angle. We'll see. You, you discuss you know his, is, he, has, he has a foundation, yeah. too. So maybe you could talk about that and then talk to Bill. To POTUS. David. Well, I'm, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. See, the thing is, is like these guys do junkets, right? They right. come into town. And uh, it's just another stop on the tour. And I really think that, you know, with the news with Hardwick, I was getting his own. You heard about it, the news that, that uh, came out last week? He's going to be like the late night Comedy Central uh, host guy, Comedy Central show host guy. He's whoa, gonna, really? He's already too big for you guys. No. Come wait, on. what is the late night Comedy Central so host there, guy? So he's mean? having his own show that's being put together by um, Thomas Lennon. And uh, it'll be a live show, like a late night. Yeah, it's going to be on after Colbert. But he's also everything with BBC and like Nerdist Dude, Industries. Dude, he's he's freaking hot. He's right controlling thirty percent of reality. He's everywhere at this point. He's totally everywhere, That's and amazing. he's got a great podcast too. So, and I met him once in in nineteen ninety nine. And you met him in two thousand. Yeah. Uh, in That's Los to put on Angeles, the resume, that one. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna try and, and do something like that. If our, I want your input too. Yeah. Ariel, what, what do you think? Who who would you who would really, I want? Yeah, who would you want? Um, I don't know. People I want probably won't fit on this show. Yeah, yeah. Wiz Khalifa. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> Kanye West. You want Kanye West on the show? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I, th- I thought you didn't like him. I don't, but that's why it'd be cool to have him on here. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Joel. Right. Billy I mean, Joel. Come on. come on. I mean, that's just, just really fine, just obscure. <laughs> I mean, we've he, made we've made people who probably don't belong work on the program for. But, not sure I can make Billy Joel. If work. If you could talk to Billy Joel about tech and what he thinks about, that he, would be the most amazing show. Yeah, everyone would want to watch that. I mean, they? It would, or me, it would, I would want to watch. The thing that. with something like that is just like you ju- he just transcends everything. You yeah, know, so it would just he would work play a song regardless. or something on the show. Yeah, well, the one person I've always wanted to meet has been Michael Stipe. I actually saw him two blocks from here, walking out of one of those new hip stores. Uh, yeah, Kitsune, Maisonet, whatever that's called. And I was walking alongside him, and you know, is that him? 
I don't know. He's pretty, other, he's pretty unique looking. He's about my height. I thought he was really right. short. But yeah. um, the lead singer of REM for people that don't yeah, know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Him and Dustin Hoffman have been my only two celebrity sightings. But yeah. Michael Stipe, I almost said Michael Jackson. Michael Stipe is the only person I'd ever want to meet. All right. Well, I'm sure there's other dudes, but. Oh, and in that same note, uh, they might be giants. Lynn Allen Flansburg. You could get them on. You could that, get them that's on. That's very probably do- they would, doable. Yeah, they're, do that. They're, more, they're as popular as ever, and they have a lot of tech stuff. They have all the dial song, and they're they're fascinating. Yeah. They're in Australia right now. Yeah. Friends of mine just saw them. And you get two them. people at once, unless you want to just have one. All right. Well, the so saga, wouldn't be allowed to there's a lot it. of them, I thought. I thought there's John a- Linnell. Well, just it's John Linnell and John Flansburg, and then the, other the rest of the game. Yeah. yeah. The rest of the game, but it's really the two Johns. Charum has a lot of good suggestions. Some people from Sons of Anarchy, some people from like Conan O'Brien. That would be, I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. That yes. might work. I think. Familiar, familiar with him? He's I don't awesome. know. We'll see what our chances are. But you know, we'll let um, you guys know as it uh, as it goes on. Also on the magic side, Pendulette. Oh, come on. Ricky would J. Would love that. Would love I, that. I've, I've met Pendulette three times. No, yeah. those are real ones. <laughs> I interviewed him. Uh, I interviewed him for Maxim way back. Oh, all right. And uh, he actually saw me act in a play. No way. Yeah. And I threw up as a kid watching his show because <laughs> I had indigestion. Did he? And then I saw him at the AVN favor? one time. <laughs> oh, okay. So it was four times. Well, because he's always out in, in, in Vegas. Yeah. There's yeah. like four really weird. Those are all very different stories. Right but um, he's amazing. Ricky Jay is the most fascinating person, but is like. He's highly intellectual and, and very mysterious. All right. Well, I think we got enough to fill but... up the, the dream bank of guests. Yeah. So I'm hope, glad hope about you're taking that. notes on this one. Oh, no. It's every, don't worry. Every show's recorded. Oh. What? <laughs> we got backups. <laughs> we got he backups. lied to me. <laughs> um, all right. I want to I want to sh- uh, shift gears and talk a bit about Google Glass just because I want to. I don't really want to talk about it specifically as you're enjoying it slash not enjoying it. But I want to talk about what is quickly quickly happening with the public perception of this thing not just the white people wearing google glass which scott is actually on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes he is dubi- bring it up bring it up dubious achievement <laughs> it's uh yeah of the year i'll slowly bring that up while we uh while we talk about it but i feel like the public perception has become that it is just this really nerdy very uncool thing and I think all of that was sort of highlighted. The culmination of that theory came together on this week's Saturday Night Live. <laughs> we'll play yes. a little of this right here where Fred Armisen played a tech reporter on Weekend Update. He talking, played like every tech reporter. Yeah, talking he about... Got, he got us all. So let's check this out. The highly anticipated Google Glass began shipping recently to tech bloggers. Here to give us his take on the new product, our Weekend Update tech correspondent, Randall Meeks. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. So tell us, what are your early thoughts? Seth, they're amazing. You know, I used to spend so much time in my life looking down at my phone, and now, thanks to Google Glass, the phone is up here, and I could use it without being rude or distracting. (laughs) And and, and it's simple. You you just just toggle through the menu like this, and you have to activate it kind of just a little... (laughs) Like this. Uh, Almost there. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. It's great because no one knows you're doing it. <laughs> well, come on. I mean, I, I noticed you're doing it. Oh, well, sure, because I told you. Now, there, there we go, it's on. Okay, now to give it a, a command, all you have to do is say, OK, glass, OK? Now, what's your Wi-Fi password? Oh, at NBC, it's Peacock. Great, OK. Peacock. <laughs> peacock. <laughs> password, Peacock. <laughs> peacock. <laughs> peacock. <laughs> peacock. All right. Password. So Password. so that's what they so that's what they were doing <gasps> on so that's what they've done uh in 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 the sort of, you know, the entertainment sort of skew on that thing. Yes. And I know you've been through some stuff already with it. I said peacock at least 80 times this weekend. Did it's you? true. I couldn't get <gasps> You can't even say your past. <laughs> but, you know, that's not even the point. Yeah, it's like Siri all over again. This is like Siri but with something on your face, which makes it even worse. But don't you think this is kind of Google's worst nightmare? You know, I think they got actually a lot of exactly maybe what they were looking for. Yeah. Which is a lot of exposure because 
This is not but, ready for consumption. Right, but so there's no not, wonder. There's no awe and wonder. Which is, is that what I, true? Yeah, I think that I, I just feel like people are seeing and they're just like, it's for nerd. It's nerdy. It's not accessible. Well, that's true, but yet over the weekend and whenever I'm wearing these things, which I always do feel embarrassed, and people go, why? See, and that's a big part of yeah, it. Yeah, and I go, I go, someone said, even at this train station, this older couple, like my grandparents, were like, so wait, I saw that on TV. What <laughs> you you move through inf- information? <laughs> you move through information. I was like, I do. They go, well, what's that for? And I was like, I I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what no it's for. Knows. But what do you what do you pay for it? You know, that's something. Yeah. Well, everyone wants to know. Right, what you right. pay. A thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. Like, oh, Ugh. No, yeah. like no. And I said, no, no, I didn't. Why did you buy it? I didn't buy it. It's right. exp- I mean, we did, but this is. I'm doing it for the purposes of seeing it. I'm not. This is an experiment. Right. Another guy was like, oh, yeah, I know what happens when you uh, someone takes a picture with Google Glass. You take them down, you crush them. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, man. He's like, I'm just kidding. He's like, but you know what I'm saying. I'm like, I know. I'm just, this is just, it's, it really gets in people's face. But then I went to a birthday party in Inwood. Yeah. And it was sort of like a little bit of a Brook, Brooklyn-y type vibe. And all the geeky dads like me like, right. would come out of the woodwork and they'd come drifting over and be like, hey. Hey, that's Google Glass. Let me see that. Like, yeah, can I see that? Everyone wants a ride. Sure. It's like uh, the VR headsets in right. the in the arcades in 1991. Right. You know, it's like you want to fight the pterodactyl. You know, like I want to try the ride. Doesn't mean you want to buy it, or you're like some weird guy with a jetpack. You know, it's like you just want to that... say you did it. Right. So I think that there's curiosity about that, but you know, this boil down. There's no use case for this right now. I don't think there's no real reason to use it. So maybe just like, start conversations in Jersey. Yeah, and we'll maybe start conversations at, at, in the Montclair train station at Bay Street or <laughs> you <laughs> with the guy who's serving coffee to you and you're talking. But you, I think it's also like um, Google wants to be seen as like a Willy Wonka and they, you know, hey, this is our weird thing. And they're always kind of nerdy. So, like, maybe this is – that's fine. But, yeah, it is ba- – I mean, right now it is backfiring as far as people would go, oh, I never want to buy this. The PR, but right? You can't buy it. So Right, you can't. But you can – but I mean, yeah, if it was like a product on sale right now, this would be it wouldn't be doing very well, bad, right? <laughs> this would be <laughs> that's, very, and that's what I'm saying. And I yeah. understand, and I think people also maybe don't understand that, right? And that's probably partly our fault. But it is not something that you can just go to Best Buy and pick up. This is something that is seemingly exclusive. You basically have to win the right via um, putting your name into an early list or be a uh, tech blogger, at Google I/O, or be a tech blogger. Yeah. Basically, winning through a hashtag, but you can't even. The channels are not even that simple to say, like, I'm in the press, can I can I buy one? You had to have signed up via the system. And you still have to pay for it. There are and no actual reviews. Then you have, to, then you have yes. to pay, and you're part of a developer program. Yeah. And then and they're very open up front about that, saying, like, this is, you know, we don't know yet. We're developing this, which could annoy you from the tech side. Or you say, so it's like part of me, it's like being part of some, like, MIT media experiment. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, I know. I'm a grad that, student. Where it's, but you're right. It's so nerdy, and I cannot justify there are people who have said they've worn this for two weeks and said, I'm going to wear this for the rest of my life. You know, who, who are those people? Uh, like, like Scoble, you know, like, or yeah. like people who have just said, uh, you know, this has transformed me. I don't know. I got, gla- I got contact lenses the same day that I got this. And you could argue that contact lenses were more transformative than Google Glass because my world got more expansive <laughs> and everything seemed larger. And I feel like I was on LSD staring at my hands <laughs> uh, with contacts. Google Glass is a screen that hovers up here, and it's not even... I mean, you try to talk about this with Bridget, but, like, I think it should be, like, fully overlaid. So at least you can be, like... If, right. I'm, if I'm going nerd, give me full weird nerd. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm in virtual reality or semi-virtual reality. Uh, everything's weird. This is, like, halfway. So oh, here, my God. So here you are on... That on, looks flattering, I guess. On, oh, you look, it's a Grimace, good photo. You look grimacing. good. You look great. You do look good. You actually look better than every other dude. And you it do. is dudes yeah. on, that, on that blog. A makeup team. My Where, problem with this product is that Google are very mercenary. You know, if, if they don't like a product or they don't think it's going to be perceived well or isn't being perceived well, they'll just cut it off. Right. right. And this could definitely happen with this product. Uh, look, for example, at the Nexus Q, which came out about exactly. six months ago. Exactly. Yeah, that's, there, that's a similar a process. There was a pre-order. You could buy it for four, four hundred, five hundred dollars uh, And they decided that, okay, we're going to take it off. They've actually removed it from their site completely. Yeah. 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 We, we may never everyone. see this again. So but, this but, could happen then, with the Google Glass. But, but let's be honest. How much more money went into Glass than went to developing oh. that? Oh yeah, I mean that was a, the Nexus Q was a strange product, a set-top box. It was a bo- it, it was, wasn't even as good as the the Google TV, right? 
um, and had a had a amp output. You know, you plug speakers into it for some reason. Yeah. But here's the flip side. Yeah. Like, is I want to make fun of this. Believe me, I do. Oh no, and, 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 I, and you do. Yeah, and I do. And there's a lot that's completely ridiculous about this. But then if you think about it, Google is kind of like it's like an exoskeleton of tech. Like they want to wear their labs on the outside. Most teams would like put this on the inside and not release it until it was totally ready, like an Apple style. I think Google likes to beta test. Like you say, they put these services at you, then you start putting your whole life on it, and then they're right. like, eh, we don't know, no, no, disconnect that. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. but uh, what the hell? But then I think that the idea here is that I think they're developing and researching. I don't even know if this is going to be the thing. I, I, it's I, not going to exactly. look like that. Of well, course I think not. That. Of course 20 not. Years down, 10 years down the line, they're going to come up with ways like connect. I think it's like connect for your face almost. Like, yeah. They're sort of coming up with the same types of touch and menus and things, but you're all we're all in on the research and development of this basically. Well, it, it, and, and, and so it's not inside, and so you get all the negatives of like in a lab, maybe a team would test this like the, the before the iPad iPad that you never saw, right? Whereas Google's like, oh yeah, yeah, you can see it because we're probably not going to do this one. In in this fact, way. if you look or at it, knows. if you look at it that way, yeah, it's brilliant, right? Because they are essentially having. Everyone do their work for them and do their R&D Perhaps for them and, yeah. and, and do the QA and all that. So in, in, if you look at it in that vein, I think it's, it's a slice of brilliance. But um, like you said, I agree, and I don't know what you guys think, but I agree the, the, the first public iteration that is available in stores will, I think, look very different than what Scott's yeah. got on his face right now. It probably will yeah. be an overlay. You, know, yeah. you, can, you can print OLEDs that are... Uh, see through, right? Yeah, and so it will basically be like a television screen, one of your eyes. I think if you just throw you that, try? yeah, th yeah, throw I'm going to try on. these on. I'm going to look. Got it. You. And Scott also has the clear lens attachment on the uh, which on, snap on the off, yeah, and, and it makes me look like I'm in a uh, like a Swedish 1978. Yeah, I don't know. Why. Or like Ariel said, you're you're getting ready for your racquetball game, <laughs> right? Yeah, so or gonna... just mixed fluids. Okay. And so there you go. Oh, there it is. I feel like. Yeah, you, you look like a. Uh, you feel the way you look. You have a, bo a Bono type look to you. You look a little. Am Bono? I the only oh, one? yeah, you kind of. <laughs> you do look do like you? the lead singer of U2 right <laughs> now. You, you, look like, sick, you kind of look like Bono. It's a beautiful I'm day. Put the in. <laughs> uh, now, when I was talking to Scott, uh, yeah. the first time he put them on, he was looking at me through this thing. Sure. And if, I don't know if you've ever had a conversation with someone when they're looking at your ear just to try and put you off. It's upsetting. But it's really upsetting. And when... that's a big thing with this because, <laughs> like I said, when off. Bridget had it last <laughs> yeah. week, when you do look at the screen, uh... both your eyes need to look at it, and it almost looks like you're either like stroking out or you're just <laughs> thinking, like you're in deep thought. Uh... And it's a little upsetting. Okay, okay Glass, take a right. picture. There you go. Nothing. Nothing. It's you. You, not, it, okay. you need the Australian oh, it's your one. accent. It's your accent. Yeah, accent. it's your dialect. Yeah. Take go. a picture. <laughs> <laughs> See, they always get me to. to Can I stroke your face? Yeah. No. I like it. I like it. Now okay, say, glass. Glass. Take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> now it just said, "What's wrong with you?" Oh, I took a picture. That's, nice. That's amazing. Um, so, so, yeah. so yeah. I hate this thing. <laughs> I, I, no, what do you think about the picture quality? The picture quality? The picture mm -hmm. quality. I, uh, what, what is the resolution of that actual screen? It's very small. 720p, and I'll tell you, they said uh, that it was like having a 25-inch no, display no. eight feet from, away from you. <laughs> no, that's kind of right. It's, I think it's right. I think that's, that's right. That's a long way away. It's very small. <laughs> yeah, it is far. Right, it's far. But you look at I those VR glasses that came out yeah. about six months ago. You know that was a seventy-inch screen. They had all the distances worked out, and you was trying to think out. Oh, okay, well, that's eighty-inch by forty. Right. You know, doing all the matriculation, yeah. but nothing has been very exciting. You know, look at the uh, the Oculus Rift, for example. Sure. Right. You know, you look like you're wearing some sort of box on your face. Right, but that face box. But the thing is, though, is you're you're sitting in your in your in your living room. Yeah, you're not on a train. You're not on a train trying to uh, get along with the common people. <laughs> you know, as but it will happen. You know, VR glasses will be wearable in public very soon. Yeah, is it gonna? I mean, you know, I the, <laughs> Scott just put on the one with the actual <laughs> tinted shades on there. Now they just need to use your one line, now, and then the music right. goes. Yeah, yeah. Bump, bump. <laughs> like a CSI. <laughs> See now. Now you look like uh, you're you're in uh, an '80s movie about the future. 
Is what you look like. <laughs> now you look like you're Santa wearing a Prague. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're one you're you're one accent away from Arnold right here. He's more man now than Borg. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's man Borgin. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Uh blog him in jack him into the matrix. Have you tried to deck him into the jack? Have you tried to go out in public with that? This is what I wore to work today. That's wow. what people I told actually, to him he looked like this. And yeah. I recorded clips of myself talking in front of um storefront glass so I could do like a v- ongoing commentary. Yeah. And people were just like at a, at the Newark <laughs> bus station. Oh my god. <laughs> we were just like I'm surprised you didn't I'm surprised you have not been stabbed yet to be totally honest. <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying hardly. It. I think it's a uh, you know actually speaking of video games, yeah. I thought th- this started reminding me a lot of like an Xbox accessory. Just yeah. take it off, please. Between he can't you know, he can't deal with the shades. <laughs> take off the shades yeah. because you can keep the band on. <laughs> Man, that is, but, it just comes off very gracefully, I'm noticing. Yeah, really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it heads me other things, but yeah. I, I think that the, uh, if you have like a quasi-virtual interface, like what if sure. you had a game that you were playing, this is not what this is meant for, but what if you're playing a game, right. and then like an Oculus Rift, you then turn to the side, yeah. and see enemies on this side, but it's sure. semi-transparent. Yeah. It's almost like that projected room, the Illuma room thing that they're saying for the next Xbox, uh-huh. so that you could look around, but not have a headset on. And right. no, playing on the TV. Well, augmented fine. reality, they tried, you know, 12 months ago, but where yeah. did it go? No one uses that. And I'm surprised that that doesn't have any Sony. augmented... I feel like Sony loves augmented reality with the dig- the touchpads or whatever they have in the um, Wonder Book. Yeah. No one wants <laughs> it. Like, yeah. Conversation ender, right? Well, that's, I mean, you're just, that's like tumbleweeds right there. Um... But that's exactly it. It's like, you know, how do people feel about a, a Wonder Book? How do people feel about... This stuff is too weird for anyone to really embrace and use well at least at least we can be happy that it's not just bigger screens and more resolution it's at least at the end of the day it's different yes right and it's stuff that we've never seen before because for a while and and I feel like it was maybe when I started at CNET up until like a year ago it was just crap that was not impressing me anymore yeah I'm, I'm not impressed by 4k TV I'm no, not impressed I'm by not I'm not impressed by 3d I think it's stupid and I think the rest of the world thinks it's stupid 4k as well. is the next 3d right and... it's just stuff that at least at least we're going down a different road with junk like this yeah. and it'll be fun to see where it ends up whether or not it's a dead end, we'll see. But at least right. we're going off in it and we're thinking outside the box again. And you're right. And people want to see it. They think of it as something. It's the first thing since virtual reality, I think, for, right. since, like, the idea of the Internet that people are thinking, could this be another world that I'm looking into? Right. But it's, and then you have to break it to people that, like, that dream is not here right now. Just yet. Just yet. But this could be the start. But it's totally connected, so there's no reason why it can't. Right. It's almost like Google doesn't want to fully allow it to go that way yet because of privacy and other things. There's a lot of talk of, like, restrictions on contacts. And I even brought up the question of, you know, what if you look at someone's face and it, like, you know, here's the person. Here's yeah. when you last met them. Right. And they were like, well, we're very sensitive to, to privacy issues. Right. But that's the, <laughs> that's, that's why we've loaded a camera on the front of your <laughs> exactly. face. Exactly. <laughs> but then great. you want that. I want, I, you know, who... Who does and does not? Both there's both sides, but there's a fantasy. You don't of know course. if you want to go down yeah, that we, road because we've all been watching sci-fi movies for thirty years, right? And it's exactly that. Yeah, that's what it is. All right, I want to I want to change gears because, you know, Google Glass is it, it's just the thing that we just have to take in moderation. Yeah. Um, here's another sort of thing that is starting to become a reality that I never thought would get off the ground, but it sort of is, and it it's it's basically. The idea of, of online gaming, but for, for money. Okay, have you heard about stuff like this? Well, like gambling, you mean? Like, like kind of like, like gambling, gambling a little bit in that vein. There's one website that I was exposed to recently called willponeforfood.com. Okay, right. here's what the website looks like. It's basically a game that you can play and win money by being the best at it. In so many words. Um, so, you know, I want to I want to Does hear, it cost you money to play? I think at some point it does. I was sent some literature on so it, and I'll, and I'll, and and I'll look that up now here. But um, it's it, it basically you're, you're given a chance to play games for money. There's 3D games that you play in your browser window for cash and prizes. All right? Mm. The guys that are doing this are based out of Canada, and apparently you're... Every night there's a tournament, right? So from seven to ten, there's a tournament where they split a hundred bucks between the top ten players, and for that tournament, there's no entry fee. So it's like, you know, I guess they must be like feeding ads or something to sort of, you know, help pay for the whole thing. 
They said they'd already given out fifteen hundred bucks, and it's <laughs> which is just I don't in, know in how long. Uh, I don't know. That's so far. The the game that they're using uh, combines mechanics from Unreal Tournament and games like Bomberman. So it's a very early stage. I don't. I mean, do, is this something that you think can take off? That can have legs? People thinking they can make a lot of money online, or do you think it's sort of uh, a different uh, you know business model? I. I think it could if you look at like poker, right? And there have been things like that before where you had. It has uh, to be addictive. It has to be right. compelling. And but I think the thing with, po- with poker, there's the there's the notion of of skill mm-hmm. here, and I think that translates with gaming. I think people are convinced that they are better or they are the best at this one game, and they will play you at this game so they can make money. Yeah. So that's but where there's I no think, real like, odds to this sort of game. Right. Either you can play it or you can't. Right. Anytime money comes into the equation, there's the opportunity for hacking or cheating or sure. other things. Like that's the only thing I, I keep wondering about. It's like is is this something where are you taking money away from other players or is it more like every you know, are they getting money from ads and then like you're paying in like a little bit of a subscription fee? Yeah. And then everyone's got a chance to win the jackpots. And like how do you Yeah, game balance, it's like a casino. I mean, it becomes so important because um you know, that's the whole idea of like fair sports competitions or anything else where you have money involved. Otherwise, how do we know that this game is really something that you can't exploit? Right. That's, I ways? think that's a legitimate concern for things like this. Yeah. So that's what I would think. I mean, it's not, you know, it's just the serious question. It's like if I'm putting money in, if I'm playing for free and then it's ad supported and then it's a chance to like, because even Xbox or other places have tournaments where they'll be like, you know, you're the best player win prizes yeah. and stuff. It doesn't really cost you anything. Then you're like, okay, well, you know, it's fine. We all get a chance. But. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there are gaming leagues already. Of course. You know, and uh, but uh, do they penetrate the consciousness? Not really. Yeah. I mean, unless you're a gamer. And even if you're a gamer, you don't really hear about it much. I mean, obviously, into, if you're into GameSpot, they do uh, broadcast a lot of the actual tournaments and right. stuff like that. But to actually watch someone play an FBS, for me, is really frustrating. You know? I hate it. Because I, I want to control the, the guy. Right. I want to actually play right. it myself. Yeah, to me, that's one thing that... But you know what, though, man? There are people doing it. Twitch TV is huge. People yeah. watch games. People watch people playing games. Maybe it's a generational thing. Maybe us three, we're too old for this. <laughs> we just don't... I'm serious. Probably, that we just don't probably, definitely. I don't know. I just... To me, I would so much rather be watching real-life sports yeah. than... Don't get me wrong. Will I watch, like, a highlight clip if you condense the whole thing and, and showed me... a uh, a series of events that were really impressive within that game world. Yeah, I'll, I'll check that out, and I'll be impressed about an amazing snipe from you know yeah. across the map or all something. All the random like that. stuff, all right? The, really yeah. out of the way. Just cut that up, and I'll watch it. But I am not sitting there watching. It, it, I I don't get it. And 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 the next generation of consoles are starting to get a little bit of a taste that that's maybe what they're kind of going for, or at least will include yeah. in their next evolution. I don't know. It's going to be a dangerous weirdo trip. Out of all the gaming for money sites that I've seen, this the Will Pwn for Food does seem kind of the most legitimate because they have a very they have a very dedicated sort of group of developers, and it's not just sort of like a one trick pony thing. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I remember I, a while back I was pitched something called called uh, World Gaming, and I think I even did a piece on it. And they were taking the existing results from Xbox Live matches. Yep. I remember this. Uh, built, sniffing that out off the servers because all the results of these games were public information and then basically being like escrow. You know, they're working like escrow and then awarding people the money after match is completed. What? Yeah. So, there, you know, this stuff, it's, it's, it's there. It's, it's out there. It, it, but it's we'll almost inevitable it that we will go down this path, like right. reality shows. Of course. Where gaming will equate to money and it you'll have these to. things. Yeah, it may come from the top of the network or the publishers. Um, you know, like if you win like a survivor thing in video games, you know, where you get a prize. Right. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's going to happen, but it's just so many. And also if you go to those tournaments, yeah, they are standardizing, right? Aren't they playing the same room yeah. with like a land? So there's a lot right. of efforts being made to normalize the territory. That's sure. the whole thing about online poker. You just have one decision. It's yeah. bad or not bad. But if you're dealing with like speed and stuff like that. Latency is a huge issue. Yeah. You know, how do you make that an even playing field? Yeah, and how people can, like, again, take advantage of that. I just think it's, if you can't see it and you're not in the room with it, you got to wonder, like, what's going on. Yeah. Um, before we say goodbye for the day, I want to uh, talk about um, piracy a little bit. So always a hot-button topic. We always love bringing it up on the show because uh, it's a big deal. 
And, you know, there's this, uh, if anything, we like to watch the cat and mouse chase. We like to see, you know, how both sides are just always, and it's always like the one side that's always light years ahead of the other, and it's a never-ending, you know, wild goose chase. But now, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, there was a massive bust recently, right, with, uh, with that group Imagine. You guys know about this? The torrent group Imagine? Mm-mm. They were uh, a huge group that was dismantled back in September of 2011 uh, when a bunch of its U.S.-based members were rounded up and arrested. They were just basically a release group that, that you know, brought, you know, ripped Blu-rays or whatever it was and put them online. Since then... Piracy has skyrocketed. Really? Yeah. So they were actually holding piracy at bay. Well, I mean, they thought that's what they wanted to mm. do. And they thought this would, uh, uh, you know, impact it and compromise the the underground network of pirates that make these things re- uh, available. But since then, and there's a chart we can pull up right here that basically talks about how many uh, uh, movies have been available with English audio sources, right? Because this was a U.S. based bust. It went down in September when it happened, but the next month was equally as big as it's ever been. So there's really no definitive. I mean, this is the proofs right here. Is that just you know this huge bust didn't really do anything. To so this is mainly movie piracy. That we're yeah, this about. is mainly movie piracy we're talking about. Because I mean, I haven't you know back in the early days, people would watch a cam job that that a friend downloaded. Sure. And I would never watch those again because they're terrible. But, right. Um, you know, the, I think the, from what I can tell is that the quality of uh, pirated stuff on the net is yeah. a lot more sophisticated than, than it used to be. Oh, for sure. Maybe 10 years ago. Oh, for sure. But, I mean, it's about, you know, and they, they keep saying this time and time again, you know, you're not going to stop piracy. Right. The way to get people to pay for content is to make it cheap and easily available. Right. You know, and they're talking now about, for example, HBO Go, you know, letting that be available overseas because, I mean, there's only, what, 300 million people in in the U.S., right um, across the globe, there's like two billion people with uh, access. American, uh, sorry, uh, uh, English speakers. Right. So if you can capture that market, they can make a lot more money out of, of Game of Thrones. Um, Australia, I'm very proud to say, or, or, or a bit embarrassed to say, is probably the biggest pirate of Game of Thrones in the world, right? Because we we don't get it until months later. Yeah. So, um, it's all right. There you're, was some U.S. Now, senator who actually thanked us yeah. for being the highest pirate of, really? of, of uh, Game of Thrones. Why did he thank them? I oh, know. I think he's being facetious. Uh, but he, they call him um, His Highness, I think, mm. in, in Australia. It's, it's, a, it's a weird sort of uh, situation that they have going on right now. And HBO specifically, I think, is right on the cusp of doing something great with it. And uh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see where they go. But, you know, when, when this data comes out, and it shows that busting up a piracy group is almost completely ineffective. To it's like trying to go after it. anonymous, really, isn't it? Yeah. Who do you go after? It's like, what do you? Where do you go from there? And what will happen now? You know, because the money that's spent, I'm sure, was not cheap to 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 you know pick all these guys up to wrangle them all up. I I don't know. I don't know where you go from here, uh, but we'll see. You know, it's an in, an interesting path, I'm sure. I think you just have to make it so so easy yeah. and so But look what's happening. But it's not going to be easy. Services. They're not getting that message. And you can tell because how Warner Brothers just pulled out of Netflix. I know. They're not getting the but message. But it was crappy exactly films. It. It, was thousands. it was all the Bond movies and stuff. Was man. it? Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen a com- comprehensive list, but it was all 60s movies. But still, I mean, they, they just don't get it. I, I understand where they're coming from, where their shareholders are coming from, and they have that mentality of like well we have to make these you know guys feel good about the whole thing and we have a we can figure out now how to match a distribution platform like netflix hey why are we even letting our stuff on there you know why not just do it ourselves i get that mentality but it's just going to be the same thing all over again and this vicious cycle will continue and it just sucks right it does suck and the easier it gets speeds download speeds yeah and networks it's only going to get faster and faster to download that same yeah. file. I mean, you can download a pirated Blu-ray in less than an hour, I'm sure. Right. I mean, you look at what happened with, with music, and you look at what happened with, you know, with books and other things, and it's like, you know, the, the, the best, it, it's, it's an impossible path. The, yeah. the, best, the best path is to, I think, head it off and say, provide reasons for people to be excited about the content. And obviously, this is discouraging on the other sides, like discouragement you can do. Mm-hmm. 
but it's like after the fact stuff. You well, know, they, it's like they're competing you know. with free. They're competing with free. The yeah. thing that they will have an in on is that it will that if they made it easier, right? Because people, it's been, I think it's been proven with people's, you know, the way they they vote with their money that if you give someone a super easy way to do things, mm. a la iTunes, which is slowly but surely getting more complicated, mm -hmm. or Steam, people will pay. So that's the thing. That's it's it, it's crossing that hurdle. I mean, you almost wonder like why not give it away for free? There's there's a side of right, like, like yeah. the crackle side of the ad driven stuff. There's a part where you say like maybe the destiny of this. It's like most of Google software is free, you know, right. um, or almost all of it, you know. So that may be the road they have to go down and just say like you know what, make certain back catalog content free. Understand that, then drive people in, give them ads. It's it's the way television was built, you know. Yeah. It's like I think that's what has to happen, and that's maybe why it's so difficult because everyone's looking at like, oh, we're going to sell these movies again, sure, and do all that, and it's like nobody wants to do that. Yeah. What, what so are you, what are you going to do? What I reckon they should do is what I really love is Amazon's auto rip feature. Like if you buy a CD, they'll actually send you right. the, yeah. the MP3s. Vinyl now too, right? Yeah, it's a it's a great feature. Yeah. What what um, really they should be doing is like if you buy a movie ticket. You get the download of that movie once it's available. That's a, that's, I mean, yeah. but what, it's, it's not a it's not a it's not a ten dollar movie ticket anymore, though, right? No, it's, it's a twenty dollar movie a, ticket. Yeah, yeah. But it'd be kind of cool if, at the moment of purchase of a movie, that's kind of like an, an advanced gamble. You haven't even seen the movie, and like one time offer, you can buy or the maybe on your download, or maybe on your way unseen. out, or yeah, on your way out would be nice. Like, oh, you really? Or like... just get it. Just you know, they give you a little voucher and one, and you just log into Amazon or, right. or whichever, and, and you get that movie. To, you've got to be able to apply in some way apply your movie ticket towards a future purchase of that thing. Mm. I just feel like that day has to come because the movie ticket price is going up. It's like, you know, that I actually find, maybe it's I have two kids, so mm. I've like totally left the building on going to movie theaters, but I'm a digital rental person now. And so like I'm not a $15 movie ticket person, I'm like a $6 movie rental right, person. Right, right. But like maybe the incentive going to the movie is like, that gets applied there to you go. that thing. And Someone's going to steal that idea, Ty. Oh, I'm it's a good one. This, it's a good one. right now. All right. The conversation will continue. Hit us up, 866-404-CNET. That's the phone number to call. You can email us, the 404 at cnet.com. Big thanks to Ty Pendleberry. Thank you very new much. New father. Congratulations oh, thank on you. that, sir. Thank you. Excellent. And not as new of a father, Scott Stein who seems to be I'm pushing the lenses up the against his face. now, this is post-glass glass. glass. <laughs> All right, let us know how that goes after woodshop class. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I right. did want to throw something at him for the whole show. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> so many people have wanted to punch me, have hated me for doing this. It, you need thick skin. It yeah. ain't an easy job. It's not as glamorous as Saturday Night Live implies. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just get it on camera. That's good. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> That'll do it for us. We're back here tomorrow. Hopefully Justin will be too. If he's feeling better, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, back again tomorrow. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Ty Pendlebury. I'm Scott Stein. I'm Ariel Nunez. Thanks for tuning in to the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>